Hello everyone. In today's session, we are going to discuss the closure properties of context-free language. Uh, like, what is the context-free language? A context-free language is something for which you are able to construct a pushdown automata, or uh, we can represent things in terms of your context-free grammar. Okay, we call those as a context-free language. And we are going to see some of the properties like union, concatenation, and cleave closure. And we are going to prove that if two languages L1, like we take two context-free language, if L1 is a context-free language and L2 is also a context-free language, we are going to prove that L1 union L2 is also context-free. Okay. So we'll first start with this union operation. Okay. So I'm just going to construct a context-free grammar representation for this. Okay, so uh, like I'm going to construct a context-free grammar and using this context-free grammar, I'm going to prove that L1 union L2 is also belongs to the given language. Okay, so let us consider your grammar for uh, L1 consists of all in ones like a variable terminal symbols and it has a starting symbol and it has some set of production rules. And this is for L1, like we have four tuples to represent a context-free grammar, right? Similarly, for L2, we have set of variables, terminals, a starting symbol and production rule. Okay. And what I'm going to derive is, I'm going to derive L1 union L2. And what is the meaning of L1 union L2, dear? So L1 union L2 is either if your input belongs to this language 1 or your input belongs to the language 2, your input has to be accepted. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give a new production rule such that S, okay, I'll take S as a new production uh, a starting symbol and S I'm going to define the production rule, S takes either S1 or S2. So S1 is the starting symbol for L1, S2 is the starting symbol for L2. Okay, so I'm creating a new starting symbol and that starting symbol derives to S1 or S2. Okay, so what we can do here is it combines both of the starting symbol together. So if the input is derived by this language, it will be accepted. If the input is derived by this language, it is also acceptable. Okay, so that is all new. So how can I define this L1 union L2 is for all the variables, I'm going to combine V1 union V2. Okay, variables that belongs to language 1, union variables that belongs to language 2. And you have created a new starting symbol, right? That also comes in your variables. And what is your set of terminal symbol? Terminal symbols that are there in L1, union. Terminal symbols that are there in your language 2. And your new starting symbol is S. And production rule comprises of all the productions rule of 1, union, all the production rule of 2, union, S tends to S1, union, S tends to S2. I'll give you an example. You'll understand it better. Okay, so this defines your L1 union L2. See, I can define all the variables. Like I, I can define all the tuple notations of L1 union L2 in terms of your context-free grammar. Hence, we can say that your union of two context-free grammar is context-free again. Okay, see, consider a language. If your input starts with, like let us take this language 1 as A, S, B and S tends to, S1 tends to epsilon. Okay, it, it is A power and B power in language I have taken as L1. And L2 defines S2, okay, uh, C, S, D, C, S2, this is S1, D, and uh, S2 denotes epsilon, okay. So, if your input is either like language 1 is A power N, B power N, and language 2 is C power N, D power N, and N is greater than or equal to 0, N is greater than or equal to 0. This is the condition. This is the language I have taken for L1. This is the language I have taken for L2. Now I have to prove that L1 union L2 is also your uh, context free language. So as per rule what I said, you have to combine all the variables terminals together, right? So variable comprises of here your variable is S1 and for your language 2 your variable is S2 and you are going to create a new variable called S. And all the terminal symbols here is terminal symbol of language 1 comprises of A and B, language 2 comprises of C and D and S will be your starting symbol and the production rule is defined in such a way that I am going to create a new starting symbol S and S tends to either S1 or S2. Okay. And the remaining productions for S1 will remain as it is A, S, B, S1, B or epsilon and S2 tends to c s d or epsilon okay so this will be the mind uh, this will be my final production rule that i am going to take here 
okay so if your input is a power n b power n s calls s1 and s1 de derives your a power n b power n and if your input is c power n d power n s calls s2 and your s2 derives your c c power n d power n condition right so this combines all okay so this is how we prove that union of two uh, context free language is also context free okay similarly you are going to prove the remaining operations too so we have context free closure properties includes uh, union of two regular language uh, two context free language concatenation of two context free language and clean closure of two context free language and you are going to use the same rule for proving it okay since every context free language can be represented using a context free grammar so i am deriving a context free grammar and if i am able to derive all four tuples and if it works pakka then we can call that as a then we can call that as your final uh, context free uh, it is a context free language got it now concatenation okay here also i'm going to take two language l1 and l2 okay and uh, here your concatenation goes like combining two things together okay so there should be a starting symbol so the language one consists of v1 t1 uh, s1 is the starting symbol and uh, p1 is a production rule okay and for language 2 it is defined using v2 t2 s2 and p2 and here for l1 concatenated l2 what i'm going to do is a very simple logic i'm going to create a new starting symbol and this will have the starting symbol of s1 followed by it is concatenation followed by the starting symbol of s2 okay so when i define like this what it will happen it will check all the elements of your s1 followed by the elements of s2 okay i'll give you this with an example the remaining symbols are same dear like you can have v includes all the variables of v1 all the variables of v2 including the starting symbol and terminal symbol combines your uh, t1 union t2 and s is your starting symbol production rule will have all the production rule of p1 union p2 union this rule s tends to s1 s2 okay so this is the definition i'll give you an example so that you will get it easier i'll take the same example your s1 is a power n b power n function okay your language 1 is a power n b power n n greater than or equal to 0 so your grammar goes like this s tends to a s s1 tends to a s1 b slash epsilon and language 2 it consists of c power n d power n n greater than or equal to 0 so the grammar for is this combines c s2 d epsilon okay now what we have to do here is the combined version l1 concatenated with l2 is what is needed so what we have to do we have to create a new variable s and this s combines s1 followed by s2 okay and the production for s1 will remain as it is s1 implies a s1 this is your rule production rules a s1 b slash epsilon and s2 implies c s1 d epsilon okay when you are deriving a parse tree or something when you want to derive a input your grammar will go like this s will call s1 followed by s2 and s1 is for a power n b power n and s2 is for c power n d power n okay so final result will be concatenation of a power n b power n concatenated with c power n d power n okay this is what your result should be there right so you are you can say that if you have the language to language l1 and l2 as a context free language then you can say that a concatenation of l1 in uh, l1 l2 is also a context free got it so would define your remaining symbols to what all your variables your variable consist of all the variables of your l1 and all the variables of l2 including the starting symbol and the terminal symbol also your l1 consist of a and b L two consists of C and D terminal symbols, and S is your starting symbol, and this is your production rule. So we are able to define all the four tuples for L one dot L two. Hence, we can call that uh, concatenation of two context-free language is also context-free. Got it? So this is how we prove it. And you have one more rule, and that's that's the last rule. Okay, clean closure. Clean closure means. zero or more iterations right so now uh, when i take a language l if l is 
a context free language then the clean closure of l is also a context free language okay so that is the definition so here uh, we don't want to care much about it since all your terminal symbol will remain as it is you are going to deal with only one one rule okay so how can you define your l star is we can add certain rules here okay i'm going to create a new starting symbol as it is and it is l star what is the meaning of star here it is zero or more iteration so i'm going to include epsilon for zero or zero iteration okay so it includes zero or more repetition of the elements of your l okay so whenever your repetition comes into picture you are going to create it like s followed by yes one okay so s denotes recursion i can apply s any number of time followed by s1 s1 is given for this language one okay so s1 is the one that is like your uh, l1 consists of all the variable terminal starting symbol and production rule for this language okay and this this is the new rule we are going to add for clean closure okay so epsilon denotes zero iteration since clean clo closure includes zero iteration and any number of repetition of your language one's element okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to create a new s s is for repetition and s1 is the starting symbol of this given grammar i'll give you an example here let us take s1 tends to it is for l1 is a power n b power n n greater than or equal to 0 i take the same example okay so s1 tends to a s1 b or epsilon okay so this is the language that i'm going to have it for s1 okay so here your new production for l star okay l star denotes it is a power n b power n any number of repetition a power n b power n any number of repetition that means i can have either epsilon or a b or a a b b or a a a b b b on any any number of repetitions of it okay and the iterations too okay so this a b followed by another a b this is also allowed and a b followed by a a b b this is also allowed okay so this is your clean closure okay so a power n b power n includes a b or a a b b or a a b b b or anything and to the whole star includes the any number of iterations here okay so the production rule for this can be written as a new starting symbol s tends to epsilon and i'm going to create s s dash sorry s1 and s1 tends to a s1 b slash epsilon okay see what will happen when i am deriving a pass tree so starting symbol it can be uh, it is replaced with s s1 okay so if i want to derive a b a b i'm going to call this repetition again s1 s1 and this s i can make it as epsilon and this s1 can be substituted with a power n b power n and this can be substituted with a power n b power n okay so it is like if n value was equal to 1 you can define it so a n a n followed by any number of combination it is allowed okay so what were both the remaining elements what all your variables you have here you have your variable as s1 here so s1 combined with the new starting symbol that is created will come as it is your terminal symbol will remain as it is a and b is your terminal symbol s is your starting symbol and this is your production rule okay so according to this we can say that a context well like when you take two context free grammar the union of two context free grammar is also context free concatenation of uh, two con context free grammar is also context free and clean closure of two context free grammar is also context free okay so these are all the closure properties of context free language thank you